The Shift Podcast, Perspective and Our Power to Change, invites us to expand our lives by changing the lens we see through. Is something different calling you? Do you ever ask yourself, is this all there is? Or have you forgotten why you're even here? Trish and Diane create insightful and empowering conversations about connecting the self, soul, nature, and community. Navigating life by choice rather than circumstance is how we make the shift to expand our humanity. The shift starts now. Welcome everyone to the shift podcast perspective and our power to change. I'm your co-host Trish Campbell along with my good friend Diane McClay and we're back with episode 22. We're part of the Transformation Talk Radio Network and the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group and we're so glad you've decided to join us for this next half hour. As we always do, I want to open up by acknowledging the traditional lands of the indigenous peoples in my area, which is Mississauga, Ontario. That's the treaty lands and territories of the Mississauga of the Credit, uh, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, the Ojibwe, Chippewa. And whether I've named them or unnamed, I honor, we honor all of their connection to our mother earth through antiquity, the wisdoms that we have been uh, passed on and we are able to come to you and have this opportunity to operate our lives and our businesses and our communities on these lands. And I just wanna open, offer that to you, Diane, to uh, speak about where you're coming from and the, the lands there as well. Yeah, thanks, Trish. And, and as a reminder to our listeners, the reason why we do this is because, first of all, we believe that you can't know where you're going until you acknowledge and understand where you've been and, and how your past shapes your future. Mm -hmm. And our conversations are about questioning everything this week and about changing your perspective. And the only way to do that is to observe a different um, perspective. And even if you don't agree with it, to get curious about it. Uh, so I'm always curious about the, the indigenous and native tribes uh, that preceded us and the cultural traditions that they have in the area, the Columbia River Gorge, the Pacific Northwest. And I would just like to name uh, the Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs, Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde, the Yakima Nation, uh, the Wishram people. Uh, there are several more. Uh, this area was a major uh, traffic corridor for economic commerce and cultural exchange. It still is today. And I would not be able to do what I'm doing and have the inspiration that I have uh, without the care and the stewardship of uh, the people who came before me and who really uh, set centuries of precedence about caring for the land and curating its beauty and curating uh, and harvesting uh, the things that feed our soul and also feed our bodies. So uh, yeah. it's important to us that we create that perspective shift. And then the challenge to our listeners is, where are you living today? Where are you working today? Mm -hmm. uh, have you, do you know who came before you? And if you don't, maybe that's a good, easy challenge to do a little bit of research. And we would invite you to actually email Trish or I and uh, do your own land acknowledgement of the people who came before you. We would love to see if we could spread this message forward. I love that. I love everything you just said. It ties in so beautifully with the conversation that we've been having. And it's our overarching theme of, you know, kind of looking at that different perspective, looking at things differently than we always have looked at them and continuing on what we talked about the last time where we are, you know, the title of our show is called Question Everything. And that's more about curiosity than anything else and not about skepticism. And we, we talked about that the last time. And what I want to bring this back to, I mean, there's so much to talk about, but the, the, one of the um, underlying reasons is that connection to nature, is our inherent um, flow with nature, that we have been over time through the systems and structures that we live in, pulled away from that. And, and um, whether it's um, the, the one thing that stands out from the last time we talked was about things that are placed on the fringe, things that are placed outside of the quote unquote norm, because they actually empower us, but it's not, we're, there are things that have been kept from us to reach a higher consciousness about ourselves, to be empowered in our lives, and instead um, look at what everyone else is doing and function in a system instead of, and then look at where we end up, where we end up um, 
you know, with depression, mental illness, disease, all of the things. So this is the overarching theme, but there's so much like detail and specificities around this that I want to dive into, but you look like you have something to say. I would love to give an example of that if I can. Yesterday, we had a beautiful mastermind. I had the opportunity to uh, to speak to our mastermind group about my story, my journey, a lesson that I learned from that, and essentially uh, bring people into some new awarenesses that I have discovered. Since I left my original dream job, mm-hmm. what, I, what I can see now that I'm gone is that there was a there was a time that I was on paid administrative leave. There was some investigation going on, and I was told to wait. I was told, "We'll get back to you, but you need to make your house your reporting station from eight to five. And like a good little employee, a good little girl, I took that quite literally, where I literally didn't do anything. I thought, "Oh, I have to be available if they call me. I have to be available if they email me." And there was this point where my partner said, "Why can't you go to yoga?" I mean, Mm. nobody's going to know, but I I had this sense of rules, this sense of place, the sense of structure that I accepted without question, because that's what the authority told me and implied to me that I had to do. Yeah. The day that I went to yoga, I felt like I was breaking the rules. Ooh, I left my house. Ooh, they don't know I'm going to yoga. And in that moment, I realized that by making that choice to question something and do something different than what was told to me or expected to me, I literally reclaimed my power. And that was the start of my new journey of of the Choice and Courage company that one choice starts to give you information about the next choice you make. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, the agency um, came back and their decision was that some of the things that they didn't agree with the way I processed them, they gave me the opportunity to work at a completely different location, six hours away from my family and my home. And they gave me the opportunity to have less responsibility and less authority, Mm -hmm. which really means they didn't want me working in the management position that I was in, but they didn't really want to fire me. And I, this was a job that I thought I was going to be in for 30 years. And as I was processing their choice for me, here was the next big aha, which I think ties into the show. I realized I don't have to take the prescription and the choices other people make for me. Yeah. I can actually say, you know what, your offer is great, but it's not for me anymore. And that's exactly what I did. I resigned from my position. I did not want to work six hours away from my family and my community. I did not want to start all over again. I did not want to have to rebuild my reputation. I did not want to have to try to prove my value system to an agency that didn't respect it or value it to begin with. And I walked away. Yeah. And in that moment, it was like a light switch for me that I had the power to choose. Exactly. And I had the power to choose because I had the courage to question the way in which things were laid out for me. Right. That, that's, that was, I got to tell that story yesterday and I'm reminded that we get to do that every day. We do. And we should do that every day. And we should. And that's why we're talking about this. Exactly. Um, I want to go back because you said so much and our synchronicity does not stop at the denim t- denim shirts <laughs> and the fact that we both take it, everything so literally because I would have done the exact same thing about not going to yoga, not like, you know, staying at home and not breaking the rules and all of that. But it's this is about the question. Everything is about dropping the script. You also said prescription and I like lit up because that's what I'm thinking. We need to drop the script of, um, of life, of society, of, you know, when you, when you meet somebody, you say, Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You know, and the the script and we're like, we're constantly living in the script of, okay, what's the next thing I'm supposed to do? Oh, somebody said, I need to do this. I'm going to do this. And, and, you know, yeah, we're pushing the edge at times, but we're not constantly, like you said, in that moment of like, making our own choice. Instead, we're letting a lot of choices being made for us just because there's so much coming at us in life that maybe we're, we're thinking we, okay, it's better just to let things happen and I'll deal with them as they come. But we really have that power to take back and reclaim. That's why we're talking about this to, you know, drop that script and maybe do things differently, do life on your own, do 
you know, DIY, do it yourself, like not follow the instructions or. Yeah. And I want to, I want to tangent this out. So our watching audience can see that you and I have both changed our backgrounds. Our listening audience doesn't know the difference, right? Right. But I, I think it's really fascinating that your background is grounded on earth with oh gosh, a, yeah. a rocky landscape with an ocean in the background at cloud level. Mm -hmm. And mine today, which is completely unplanned, I picked one that is actually above earth in the nighttime sky with a horizon of light circling the earth. And I picked my background today because it's a reminder to step out of the normal perspective, mm -hmm. to, to get a bird's eye view, to look at things from a different angle. And I assume you picked yours with the opposite intention of actually doing what you're talking about, grounding into our values, grounding into putting our feet where they feel firm and where yes. they feel safe and what's right for us in mm -hmm. our own authenticity. So the, we're going to keep changing our backgrounds up and we're always going to have a story that connects to real world, real awareness, real lifetime hints and tips that we can pass on to our listeners about stepping into that choice, stepping into that courage and really listening to that inner intuition. Yeah, I love I love that you pointed that out that there there's that polarity but there's that connection of like earth, from earth to out into the universe and that is the possibilities when we when we really build that connection with ourselves and are guided by that inner strength and inner that intuition and this is what I want to talk about some of these like the the details around things in like last time we identified um, it was April Fools, uh, and we identified, you know, taking a different look, looking beyond what is just in front of us and what the script is. Okay, it's April Fools. Okay, we got to play a joke on somebody. So, you know, and then it's bigger and bigger and bigger. And we keep amplifying that. Well, let's amplify something different. Let's amplify doing something different. So, um, one of the things is how things have been put on the fringe, like intuition, for example, and, and, um, put not put on the fringe but like put a label on it so it's was often referred to and we've talked about it on this show women's intuition but it's not just women's intuition and so I would question ask people the question why it's called in women's intuition or why it was coined or labeled that because it was meant to again that was meant to place it on the fringe to be something that is is only for women and not to be part of the um the core of our values as society, not to be valued as something we're living and breathing every day. It's meant to be something that's woo woo. Again, another thing that's been placed on the fridge around like spirituality, astrology, all of these wisdoms, these ancient wisdoms, um, the moon cycles that have been through antiquity being um, guiding us that we've, again, placed on the fringe and not uh, put focus on as, as, as a, a tool of guidance or as um, an embodiment of our natural being. Th that is nature. That is going with the flow of nature. Those, those things that have been placed on the fringe, all of them that I just listed. Yeah. And I, as you're talking, I'm thinking about, uh, so I was, I was watching One Strange Rock and it was narrated by Will Smith. And there was an episode where there were um, indigenous peoples up in the Arctic circle. So mm -hmm. think Eskimos, but a different tribe of people. And they thrive on uh, what the ocean provides them. Well, the elders knew the moon cycles Mm -hmm. and knew that based on what was happening with the moon, we know science tells us that the moon influences the tide levels. Yes. The, the tide's going out and the tide's coming in. Science has proven that. Well, without science, without internet, the elders watched the cycles of the moon, watched what was happening with the water, and, and they actually have a very limited time window that they, uh, that they collect mussels that still grow and function in the seabed, mm -hmm. but they're under literally like 15 feet of ice. So what yeah. they know is they've dug a hole down to the water level. They've created like an ice cave and their safety and livelihood depends on how the moon is pulling the tide out. They know that at this certain time in the moon cycle, the water is going to be at its lowest. There's a eight to 12 hour window at best. And they go in and they harvest the protein that they need to sustain them through 
you know, the harshest of winters. Yeah. With that story, that sounds very grounding. It sounds like it's very, like you can accept it, right? It sounds reasonable. It sounds scientific. It sounds logical. And, and yet, if you, if you take out that context, you just say, hey, pay attention to the moon cycles. Suddenly, it's too woo-woo for a lot of people to really digest. Right, because we always have to have tangible proof right in front of us to believe something. And that's, again, our conditioning. But going back to those moon cycles, that is because they were, the, the reason why they were able to do that and, and to intuit that, because they were into, in tune with their, their nature inside of them, uh, was because they weren't following a script like we are. So they don't, right. and they're not being told what to do. They're, they're going with the flow of nature again. And that's a good point. The moon cycle, like to focus on, because like we have the full moon tomorrow. The last show we had, we were in a new moon. And so people, you know, and joke about things happening around the full moon and all that, but really those, and, and that example that you gave is the perfect example to explain how it works, how the energies of the moon work, because what it affects the tides why does it affect the tides because it's um, a gravitational pull and why does it affect us why do why do things seem to you know feel different or intense or or you know high and low and all these these feelings it's because we're 70 percent water we're just as affected as the tides are as is the ocean and so we're going to feel at times depending on the cycle of the moon it's going to be an illumination period or it's going to be like a quieting you know kind of going inward period and and so that is something that we really as a collective haven't really put focus on as an you know, another tool, another internal, um, you know, in our internal toolbox, like we, we have everything inside of us. But again, it's been placed as something that's out there that because there's no tangible proof that we can't possibly apply this in our lives. And yeah, and I want to I want to tag on that. So I don't I, I hear astrology bits and pieces, you know, you say the new moon, the old moon, mm -hmm. partial moon, in general concept, I I have an understanding, but I really haven't integrated that knowledge into my life in the way you have or, or other astrology type people have. And what I would tell our audience is you don't have to. You don't have to suddenly be a Zodiac specialist. You don't have yeah. to understand uh, the, the higher, deeper levels of any ancient wisdom. You literally just have to say, huh, I'm feeling anxious today. I wonder why. Is there a pattern to that anxiousness? I'm feeling expansive today. Hmm. I wonder why. Yeah. Even though there's an external universal force that may be influencing something we don't even understand, mm -hmm. the biggest tool that we can give our listeners today is to generate awareness. How do you personally feel in yes. any given situation? What is the information that your body, your soul, your spirit, your mind is giving to you? And how does that compare to the information that other people are giving you? Right. And, and then you start to do your own tracking, your own internal connecting. Huh, that's interesting. Every 12th of the month when the full moon rises, I'm grumpy. Huh, I wonder why that is. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying I am. I'm just randomly, I know, pulling, but... a, I'm randomly pulling a situation out. But when we can develop awareness, then our power goes up because we can start to say, is this in alignment with something that I feel internally or yes. is it not? Yeah. And that's exactly it. It's have, it's feeling, it's taking that moment to ask yourself and, instead of just writing it off because that, and, and to your point about astrology, yes, you don't have to be an astrology master wizard whatever to know you know know all your signs and your your placements of planets and all of those things you don't need to know anything but it's 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 something that you can go to and say oh i'm feeling like you said why you know i'm feeling a certain way what's but what's beneath that and then maybe go check out something like where this moon is where, where the moon is right now what's the moon position what what um you know astrologically has happened a lot of times it makes it make sense so it's not necessarily oh i need to follow astrology so i know to make should i buy this house or not or should i take this job or is this relationship right but it's more so to um you know kind of validate what you're already feeling so you're honing in on that intuitive muscle inside and building that but then you have these other 
other um, tools to use as kind of a, a guidance and that's working in conjunction with, with nature, which we are a part of, it's coming back to that natural flow. And part of that is also, um, there's, there's just so much to talk about, but that it's, it's going back into um, when you, when, just like when I, when I said on one of our last shows, uh, like if there's a holiday, um, you know, look beneath that, if there's, you know, something we're celebrating, what is, what is real, like the real, the underlying truth of that. And, you know, there's a lot of things like this week, it's just, I, I don't know why I feel called to talk about this, but I heard something I've never heard before about the self-love movement, for example, and really what we're talking about here is, all about that like it's all about connecting inward and so it was it's a, I want to bring it tie it in because I I heard that the self-love movement is narcissistic and I'm like that's exactly the kind of conditioning that we live in to think that focusing on yourself focusing on how you feel focusing on what you might need in any given moment is is narcissistic is selfish we've talked about these things before about taking care of ourselves first because our relationship with ourself affects every other relationship we have and every dynamic we have in our lives so why would that be perceived as narcissistic like that I was just like blown away when I heard that well I think that's and, I, I, I'm sorry go ahead no I have something I, and that's exactly the conditioning that we live in because the old earth and we're now shifting, we're in the middle of shifting into the new earth. The old earth wants us to focus on everybody else, wants us to focus on the external, wants us to seek externally for all the answers. Because why? Because we're disempowered in that state. So when we focus on the internal, what's coming up inside of us, what tools we have inside of us, like you said in a couple different points already, that, that we reclaim that power. So that... Um, that narrative, that script again on, you know, it's selfish to be loving yourself or self-love is selfish. I would say narcissistic is a little bit extreme form. <laughs> like I was just like, okay, that is some deep conditioning. And also from a lens at a different point in the hierarchy of our system than I'm at right now. So um, if uh, well, that's a whole nother conversation, but <laughs> where I was going to jump in on that was, I think that when we hear a label, that is one of the first exactly. places that we should be implementing this question everything concept. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to label it? What does the label do? Does the label pull us together or does it separate us? Does Is the label meant to cause harm? Is the label meant to control? Is the label meant to inform? Mm -hmm. Label on a food can, it's going to tell me what's in it. That's informative. Right. Even just saying that somebody is narcissistic, and I disagree with the narcissism, I'm just going to challenge you a little bit, is the, the immediate response is, that's, I don't like that. That's bad. And I think that, I think, here's my challenge to our audience. Keep track. Keep a little scrib note or notes in your phone. How many labels come at you in your workday or your, your regular day in your community? Do you notice the labels that are being used around you? How do you react when you hear the label? Why do you react when you hear the label? What feelings get brought up inside you? And if, you, if there's something about the label you don't like, just like the universal question that we asked in the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group app that we put out to everybody is, I think really the pivotal point of transformation is when we say, what can I learn from this situation? What is yeah. this thing teaching me? Yeah. Right? Because then we internalize it. And the shift literally, as you and I both say on our show, the shift starts inside and it starts with us. Right. So question the label is my message to people today. Question the label on everything. And even going back, you know, you said when you look at the label on a can of food or whatever, I would even question that because everything is, you know, so swayed to sell. There's greenwashing, pinkwashing, you know, all these things to get us to think something's healthy and it's not, or, you know, that's just one example. So it's really, that's why we titled this question, everything it's, you know, it's because it really is like, 
and and it's and it's about taking back that power also having fun with it we don't have to take ourselves so seriously in this either but it's like it's that is really um you know bridging that that connection with ourself when we when we do that it's just you know making us taking us to a higher level of consciousness each little thing we do in that um that reflection like the universal question that you mentioned so it's yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I feel like label, you know, questioning labels is, you know, one of our next topics because we could go all over the board on that. I know. But the thing is that we want to we really want our listeners to know today is that they have the power inside them to choose how they mm -hmm. react or how they respond. And if you start with a question that affects you personally, you are bound to find more information that that allows you to connect to that internal guidance system. Right. And the whole point of connecting to the internal guidance system is because, like I said before, we're shifting into this the new earth. We're in that space, the old earth we're leaving behind of the uh, separation and the external and um, the duality. I mean, look at how many topics we we could take the or directions we can take this in and we're moving into a new place of unity and of connection and um of oneness and that is again when you talk about those things again those get placed a lot of the times on the, on the fringe so it's right. um it's really about in you know taking a moment and asking the questions taking the time for yourself to connect deeper Right. And the way I'd like to wrap this up is I'd like to invite our audience to come into the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group app, download mm -hmm. it on your Apple or Google Play Store, because we have a lot of influencers who can delve into a lot of these different conversations. There's a lot of tools, a lot of perspective that we can offer you absolutely for free. And we really want to have that conversation with you. So you can find Trish and I in the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group app, and you can always find us on our websites. Uh, we're coming to the end of our show and it's always goes super, super quick, but we're grateful for the opportunity that Transformation Talk Radio provides us to have this voice and to express these opinions and to the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group for uh, helping us develop the tools to do it in a meaningful way. We appreciate you tuning in with us. Tune in next Friday to the Cornelia Stephanie show, The Stories of Hope. We have a great podcast lined up. Come back and see us again. Thank you for listening to The Shift Podcast, where perspective and our power to change intersect. Slowing down to look at things from a different angle is necessary to affect positive change. You hold the power to transform yourself and your life. It is already inside you and it's within reach. Clarity comes from awareness. Momentum comes from choice. Healing, growth, and transformation happen on The Shift Podcast. The first and third Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Pacific. For more information, go to invibe.ca or dianemcclay.com.